Welcome to Audit Archive, where we run you through some of the most questionable and rather atrocious police encounters. Today, we're looking at several cases of police misconduct, including an incident where officers brutally slammed an elderly, disoriented patient onto the rocky ground, causing severe facial injuries. On June 6, 2020, officers Russo and Rutledge from the Put-in Bay Police Department were engaged in a routine traffic stop when they noticed another golf cart passing by incorrectly and not adhering to a stop sign. Deciding to address this infraction, the officers initiated a pursuit and quickly managed to pull over the offending cart. The entire sequence of events was recorded on Officer Russo's body camera, capturing the interaction and subsequent stop of the golf cart. Really close. Yeah. You know what? You want to advise these guys and just get them? Sure. Uh, At this point, Officer Russo turned on his siren and pursued this golf cart full of tourists for allegedly failing to stop at a stop sign and therefore driving recklessly. Violating a stop sign is prohibited under Ohio Revised Code, Section 4511.43a. Under this code section, except when directed to proceed by a law enforcement officer, the driver of a vehicle approaching a stop sign must stop at a clearly marked stop line. If there is no stop sign, then the driver must stop at the point nearest the intersecting roadway where the driver has a view of approaching traffic on the intersecting roadway before entering it. Additionally, after having stopped, the driver must yield the right of way to any vehicle in the intersection or approaching on another roadway so closely as to constitute an immediate hazard during the time the driver is moving across or within the intersection or junction of roadways. Golf cart for station. We'll be out on another stop in the sandbar parking lot. Go ahead and stay on the golf cart. Hey! Come over here. Stand over here. Overloaded golf cart. You got your driver's license on you? Yep. Your location? Sandbar parking lot. I think I have to get a couple of good rides to a sandbar. All right. Well, that's not where you went the first time. And you're driving all over the road. No, we come right here. Well, no, you didn't. You went down the road. You went the wrong way. And you're driving all over the road, running the stop signs. You got way too many people on this golf cart. I didn't run no stop sign. You ran the stop sign. I watched you, brother. You got your ID on you too? You. You got your ID on you? Go ahead and stand over there. Oh, I'll put it in station. What uh, rental company is that? Go ahead, 903. I have one OLN when ready. Go ahead with OLN. Union Edward 663255. Union Edward 663255. Find out what, I know what he's doing. He's giving her
All right. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Now you get arrested for it. What did you give her? Would you she just it? stuck it down Come the front on, of her man. pants. She, I watched. Come on. You Don't. Yeah. Keep the bag. During the traffic stop, Officer Russo claimed to have seen the driver hand a packet or baggie to one of the women in the golf cart. However, the body camera footage was obstructed by a ticket at the crucial moment, making it impossible for this action to be visually confirmed. Following this, Officers Russo and Rutledge approached the woman to arrest her. As marijuana was not legalized in Ohio until 2023, possession prior to this could be charged as a misdemeanor. It's important to note that only Officer Russo reported seeing the exchange, and this claim was denied by the driver and other passengers. This discrepancy could raise questions about the reliability of the testimony and the legality of the arrest. Under the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, individuals are protected against unreasonable searches and seizures. This protection extends to requiring probable cause for an arrest, which must be substantiated by more than just an officer's uncorroborated observation, especially when such claims are contested by all other witnesses. The Fourth Amendment states, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. According to the Ohio Revised Code, Section 2921.03, on intimidation, an officer who uses force or threats to compel or attempt to compel someone to act against their will, especially without probable cause, is engaging in intimidation. This kind of behavior can also be seen as a willful attempt to abuse the power vested in law enforcement officers, which could be construed as unlawful. Step back. I'm gonna get a female officer so gonna search the shit out of you, so you better just tell me what he gave you. Hey, back up. Hey, no, right, get him, right. get him in cuffs. Alright, turn around. Turn around. Hey, I, I, turn around. What, so what I do? What I do? What I do? Get back! Go! Get back! Get back! Get back! Get back! You wanna get shot? Get back! Get back! Keep going! Get back! Get back! During the encounter, the situation escalates as Officer Russo threatens the woman with an invasive search by a female officer soon to arrive, urging her to confess. This type of coercive statement by law enforcement can be seen as an attempt to intimidate or coerce a confession without due process, which conflicts with the principles of voluntary self-incrimination protected under the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. This action leads to a confrontation as the driver, seeking clarification of his alleged crime, finds himself being pursued without receiving any explanation, which is problematic from a legal standpoint. Get back! Get back! He's under arrest. Get back! I didn't do nothing. Put your hands behind your back. My hands is here. Put your hands behind your back. Bro, y'all tripping, bro. Hey, no, no, no. Down. No, tell me what charges. Tell me what No, tell me what charges. Bro. Why did you do that? 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 Why Tell me what charges! Hey, hey, no, Tell no, me what charges! What are you doing to charges? What charges? No, nigga, fuck that! No, nigga, no, fuck that! No, 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 get back! Get back! Get back! Get on the ground! 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 On the ground! 
Get on the ground! Get on the ground! You're gonna get shot. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Call him. Call him on the radio at gunpoint. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. The situation further escalates as the officers attempt to arrest the driver following a scuffle, with passengers nearby becoming increasingly agitated and seeking answers about the basis for the arrest. The officer's reluctance to provide reasons for the arrest could be seen as indicative of not having a clear legal basis for their actions at that moment, potentially fishing for reasons to justify the detention. As tensions heighten, both officers draw their service weapons and command the group to get on the ground. It remains ambiguous whether this directive is aimed solely at the driver or all the onlookers as well. This approach can be seen as an excessive display of force, potentially infringing on the rights of those involved. In the context of U.S. law, the actions of the officers raise concerns under Title 42, Section 1983 of the United States Code, which allows citizens to sue for civil rights violations committed by government officials. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get back! 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 Get on the ground! 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 It's important to highlight that during the confrontation, one of the men consistently responds to Officer Russo's commands to get on the ground by asking him to put your weapon down. As tensions escalate, the footage reveals a critical moment where Officer Russo ends up pointing his gun at the head of this man. This prompts another individual to intervene, attempting to pull the targeted man away from the direct threat. Get on the ground! We're calm! Put your gun down! We're calm! Put your gun down! Nobody's armed! Look at him! Look at him! I need units here now at Adventure Bay. Several parties have guns. Get on the ground! 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 Get on the ground!
I got cops. I got cops. As more police reinforcements arrive at the scene, Officer Russo begins issuing orders to have two of the men, including the driver and another individual attempting to de-escalate the situation, tased and demands that everyone be arrested. Officer Russo alleges that the driver was fighting him from the start, suggesting a physical confrontation occurred, which is directly contradicted by the body camera footage. This claim by Officer Russo is problematic, as the footage shows no such altercation, indicating that the arrests were baseless and possibly an abuse of authority. Under Title 18, Section 242 of the United States Code, it is a federal crime for any law enforcement officer to willfully deprive a person of a right or privilege protected by the Constitution or laws of the United States. This includes any acts of misconduct carried out under the color of law. In this case, the baseless arrest and use of excessive force without probable cause could fall under the statute, marking a serious violation of civil rights. We will in a minute. Shut up. Stop resisting. She's under arrest. Shut your mouth. You have the right to remain silent. How about you do that? Shut your mouth. With my toes. With my toes. Well, first it's drug possession. What drugs? The drugs that you handed to your girl. I got it. No. Please stop! 903 to station. We have several parties in custody. I need you to call Sergeant Lyle. She's got drugs down the front of her pants. Sit up. Sit up. Get off of me! I'll get up on my own! 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 Listen. I will kick you. Get the f me out. Get up on my own. You want to get talk up on PO as well? Get up on, I'll get up on my own. Sit Let up. me get up on my own. Sit Let up. me get my chance. You Sit bitch. up. Let me get up on my own. Sit up. He asked me to, to get up. Get I will get up on my own. Get up there. Now stay there. She's got drugs down the front of her pants. So I'll get a female officer to search her. I didn't show you how I'm arrested. No, I'm drugs down the front of your pants that you stuffed there. Okay, that's why you're in handcuffs. So you're catching a why felony. Is else in because they're all getting obstructing charges, because felony. They're all going. They, yeah, they tried. They tried to fight us as soon as we went to arrest her. They're all going. You're going. You're such a liar. Okay. It's all on camera, brother. It's all on camera. It's all on camera. Yeah. It's all on camera. Unit one. We're gonna start transporting these guys back. Okay. Get. It. Go ahead and sit up. No, I can't. I can't. How can I cannot sit up. Okay. How can I cannot sit up. Roll to your side. I can't, bro. My hip is done. You tased me for nothing. You shot me for nothing. I had my hands up when you shot me. I can't do nothing. EMS for taser deployment. You, you can't sit up. Damn, you can't sit up. You can't. You can't. You can't. A firm adventure bank parking lot right behind the resort. Whoever we can get transported right now, let's get transported. But they gotta go one at a time. He has to get seen by EMS for a taser deployment. He has to be seen for a taser deployment. We all gotta be seen. We all gotta be seen. Get him at the station. Uh, if we can't, we all gotta be seen. They've gotta be over there, out of this scene. Oh my okay. God, bro, bro, I'm shot for no reason. I'm shot for no reason. Hey, don't you understand? I'm shot for no reason. My You're not shot. I am. I mean, it's a take. I got a gun take. It's a shot. I'm shot. I'm shot. I'm shot. I'm gushing blood right now. I'm gushing blood right now for no reason. We got no EMS in route for you. No. Hey, so what's my charges? The squad is in route for you, dude. You gotta calm down. Bro, what's my charges? 
Please tell me my charges. If somebody tell me my charges right now, I'll relax. Tell me my charge. What's my charges? Uh, tampering with evidence. Tampering with no, no, yeah. what, what, what the, the drugs that you handed to your girl. It's just stuff in front of her pants. What evidence? The stuff that I saw Again? on camera. Okay. And then resisting arrest. Okay. Just, no. And then assault on a PO for hitting me. No. So do you want you, me to keep you, stacking you, you, the you felonies? You arrested me for now, no stop. reason. No, I did not. You arrested me for no reason. I did not. Yeah, you hit him in the face. You attacked me for no reason. We attack you. We try to place you No, no, bro. You can't. You were under arrest. Bro, you can't. You can't put me under arrest for no yes. reason. We we explained to you your charges. You, no. Now you, now you, you assaulted me. Bro, you can't the put me under arrest for no reason. Hey, you're going crazy. Bro, you're okay. So, you can keep the dog in prison. Hey, no. Okay, cool. I've been there. Good. You're going back. I'll fight you right now. What you mean? You're threatening a police officer. You, you there you go. Me for no reason. He has, you detain me for no reason. So we got we got a taser deployment on him. Yeah. He's got a head wound and taser deployment. Uh, someone stole my body cam. Hey, you better back up. You better back up. Go down there. You're in my scene. Get out there. Do you want to go to jail? Go over there. Go over there. I can take you to jail for obstructing. This is my scene. This parking lot. I'm right here and I'm recording y'all. Go back behind that post. Stand back behind that post. Stand back behind that post. Otherwise, you're going to jail. I have my hands up. I have my hands up. You didn't get on the ground. How about that? I have my hands up. You didn't get on the ground. I have my hands get on the and ground then for you, what? And then you pushed me in the face when that I tried to arrest me. somebody? That, that was you. Me. Never. So that's assault on I a never, police officer. I never Felony. touched Felony. nobody. Felony. I never touched nobody. I didn't do anything. He's squabbed. Okay, he can go. They all interfered with the arrest. No, I did not. Nine oh three station. Were we able to get a hold of Sergeant Wild? Sergeant Wild is in now. Copy. Okay. Okay. Go arrest me for no reason. Get back. Man, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Okay, okay. jail. Have some my charges. Hey, find we, find we don't meet. My girl, right. you ain't gonna find none of that shit. He has to go. Bro, nigga, y'all busting my chin up. I ain't chilling. I was nigga, busting my chin up, nigga. Stop arresting me for no reason. I want you to get a female officer to check her. She's coming. She's coming. I'm looking under the truck. All right, gotta, can we put him in a car? Yeah, but we got one lost body cam. Sir, but that was yeah, we lost someone's someone's dead the while we were fighting with them. I gotta find that body cam. Yeah, but you were the whole group. No, you guys I, I, came up at us when me, I tried to arrest two people. Then I, then I, not, no, I said, I said, you got, we need to chill. So, and that's why, bro. I, when I got seven people rushing up on me and there's two of us, and as soon as I got to place somebody in arrest, you guys rush me? What do you expect's gonna happen? I don't have pepper spray or a yeah, taser. Exactly. I have a gun. And that's that's why, what's gonna happen. Assault that's why, and that's You make exactly me fear for my sir. life, I'm gonna shoot you. Okay, that's what's gonna happen. So the way you acted wow. is the way I react. Now, did I shoot you? No, I didn't. Okay. You're not supposed to. But you can't have at any me. weapons. All of you guys came at me. Um, no, they just came after us. Yeah, I would repo it. I would repo it. Yeah, yeah they were a uh, reckless op and they had drugs the on the cart. Did they have the key? For I don't know if they took it out. Yeah, it's um, I don't know where it's at. One of them might have it.
Well, let me photograph it first. Yeah, no, I'm not going to touch it. I'm pulling that back. Yeah, they locked it, or somebody locked it. They all are getting resisting, obstructing, and assaulting but a police no, officer. But nobody was assaulting you, though. Yes, they were pushing us back when we were trying to arrest somebody. No, they, they weren't, though. Okay, well, they're... Okay, you they're, cannot, okay you well, you're not their lawyer. You're not their lawyer. They all have lawyers. Okay. Where did EMS go? I'm sorry? What's that? I'm arresting her in the white with the phone. Okay. I have no reason to be arrested. All right, place your hands behind your back. Where'd she go? Don't do it. I am stopping Don't do it. Give me her phone. You're under arrest. Right. Why am I under arrest? She didn't do anything. I can't talk. Arrest her. Arrest her. For obstruction. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Where did she go? 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 Back, back up, back up. Nigga, I didn't move. Back up. I didn't move. You're in my scene. Back I didn't move. Y'all walked with me. I didn't move. Go back. I didn't move. Y'all walked with me. I didn't move. No. You see me walk here? You need to get beat on no. that post. You see me walk here? You're going to be under arrest. What did you see me walk here? You want to go to jail. That's all I'm saying. I didn't do that. You want to go to jail. I got to get her in the phone, bro. Okay. What am I doing, bro? You're in my scene. Get back. I don't have to explain to you again. If you don't get back beyond that post, you're going to jail. I put my hand behind my back, but not you. You're going to go to jail. Take your seat. No. What did yes. I do to you? You went after the officers no, when they went I to arrest her. I, I wanted her phone. I said, give me your phone. You got between two officers no, I that didn't. were protecting her. Give me your phone. I'm baby. not arguing with you. I'm not arguing with you. Take your seat. Here. 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 Stop. Here. Uh. Hey, Rut, get him seated so he's not on his chest. Yeah, that's a real gun point. You had us at real gun. You came after officers. With what? We had our hands seven up. Seven of you. Bro, we never came at you. You we don't have to have a weapon. Listen, seven of you listen, came after two police officers. Can you please officers. just listen? I'll listen to you. All we was trying to do was talk and ask okay, why. Okay, you weren't talking. You were bro, screaming. No, we were yelling. Bro. We you were yelling. We just wanted aggressive. to get an understanding. It's all on camera. It is all okay. on camera. All we so, wanted to do was get an understanding, bro. I promise you, all we wanted was an understanding. But you, you went our about hands it the wrong up. way. I made sure it wasn't no, no type of threat. You were hands up. No, no it was not. You can't just put your hands up and start screaming at people. Bro. Because my officer got punched in the face. I understand. By one of you guys. And not one of me. No, it wasn't. You're all getting it. in the face. You're all getting it because that's a got You attacked police officers. No, you didn't. No, we so didn't. it's not up for debate. You get to go to court for that, okay? Bro, it's on camera. I'm going to put the felony charges on you. It's you on get to go camera. to court. So, prison. Everything is on camera. Okay. Yeah, it's all on camera. I hope it is. Please be, because if it is, we need the unit floor here. Yeah. And I need Wild to search that female that they're treating. Uh, Wild on scene. She's getting here. Are you breaking unit floor? 903 station. Go ahead for station. If you can have Sergeant Wild bring Unit 4 over here, he should be on station. So, I mean, do we want to get these guys? Yeah, we'll get one guy back, but they're all going to be there's, combative. There's, there's two in there. Yeah, so we'll get them back. Um, what? Obstructing official business. Obstruction. What was that for? Was the, That's for when you guys. 
What's so, the initial, the initial arrest? So was when I, I went to arrest you, the female. For no, listen, you're not listening. I never. You want to know your charges? Yes, I do. Okay. So when I went to go arrest the female. All of you guys got between us and started pushing us back. We never went okay? there with So you're getting a struggling felony. Never in three feet yes, you were. You no can't way. just put your hands up and then say, I'm no threat to you. Because no, when there's seven of you, you and you guys lose your like that, that's why I drew my gun so on you. you got mad. You, you, okay? Hey, at the end of the day, just say you were mad. I'm not mad. You were I wasn't mad, mad until you acted mad. the way you did. So you're mad. Okay, well, you know what? You're gonna be mad when I put those charges on you, you because you're gonna take. You want on me. It's on video, so ha have a good time in Mansfield. I'm sure you do. All right, so we need drug trades real good, right? That evening, nine individuals, six men and three women, were apprehended and charged with offenses, including inciting violence and aggravating a riot. However, these charges were not sustained. Video evidence of the events prompted Ottawa County Prosecutor James Van Eerten to dismiss all charges and order the release of the six men who had been detained. In the wake of these events, on June 10th, Mayor Dress announced that Put-in Bay Police Chief Steve Riddle was placed on paid administrative leave while an official investigation into the incident was conducted. Furthermore, on June 9th, Officer Russo and Sergeant Melissa Wild tendered their resignations verbally stepping down from their duties and foregoing their scheduled evening patrol shifts. Next, on March 10, 2022, Officer Evan Driscoll, while on patrol, noticed a vehicle operated by a DoorDash driver named Mr. Delane Gordon exceeding the speed limit. Upon measuring the vehicle's speed with radar, Officer Driscoll confirmed it was traveling at 49 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour zone. This observation led him to initiate a traffic stop. The encounter was recorded on the body camera worn by Officer Driscoll, capturing the details of the traffic stop. What's going on, man? Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. I'm Officer Driscoll, College Up Police Department. Reading this officer, whenever you were coming down uh, Talent Road, I got you at 49 and 35. Yes, sir. You what? I was asking really you sure about that because I was going to So what I got you at was 49. You got your uh, driver's license, your insurance card, and your registration on you? Do you have proof that you got me going that I got you by radar, man. And I'm, am I allowed to see this? No, we're not, do, we're not that. doing that right now. You if mean? you want to argue all that, you have to go to court for it. Um, I'm saying that I wasn't going that way. But I'm saying that you are. So I need your information, please. Why is it that I can't see proof? Because it's in my car and you're not getting in my car. I don't have to get in the car to see it. I need your information. Could you get your supervisor so that we can have Give proof? me your information or you're going to be coming out of this vehicle. I can get out, sir, but... Can Give I me your information. At the beginning of the interaction, Mr. Gordon and Officer Driscoll experienced tension as Mr. Gordon requests to see proof of his speeding. Legally, officers are not required to show such proof at the traffic stop, which is a point of contention. Mr. Gordon's subsequent request for a supervisor further strains the interaction, which Officer Driscoll chooses to ignore as he proceeds with the stop. The traffic laws in Tennessee, as outlined in TCA Section 55-8-156, grant municipalities the authority to set their own speed limits on local roads, not exceeding 55 miles per hour, and to establish special speed limits near schools under certain conditions. This variation in speed limits can often lead to drivers unintentionally exceeding speed limits, particularly when transitioning between areas with different speed regulations. This context highlights the complexity of navigating varying speed limits within different municipalities, potentially contributing to misunderstandings during traffic stops, like the one experienced by Mr. Gordon. I'm going to turn my video on. Wow. Get out, get out of the car. You can't do that for a traffic stop, sir. 623, start me now. Get out of the car, man. Please don't touch me, sir. I'm telling you to get out of the car. All right, bro. Let me turn my video on. I'm going to tell you. Get, you, get the hell out of the car. Sir, this is a traffic stop. Please don't hurt me, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm a good kid. Stop. Get out of the vehicle. I'm recording you. This is a traffic I stop. I will tase you. Get this out. Traffic stop. Get out. You will be tased. Get out. He said he pulled me over for a traffic Get stop. Get out. He'll tase me. You can't do that, officer, because I call for your Get support, out. Sir. I have Get a out. What is the you reason? You refuse to give your information. I told you to get out of the car. Now you're resisting. I get out. Refuse. I asked to speak to your supervisor. Get out. Sir, I feel get comfortable. Out. Please get your supervisor. I don't give a shit Please what you feel like. Me. I said get out. Please stop it. Why are you being like this? Is this is how y'all really are? Please stop. Uh, this get is out. all on tape. Please stop. Get out of the car. Please don't hurt me. Why get do you out. this? No, sir. I'm telling you to get out. I'm, I'm telling you that this is not lawful. Ah!
Oh my god! Get out! Get out! At this point, Officer Driscoll escalates the situation by forcibly opening Mr. Gordon's car door and deploying a taser. Despite Mr. Gordon's non-aggressive behavior and lack of any intent to flee, this act of opening the door without Mr. Gordon's consent and using a taser can be seen as a violation of his Fourth Amendment rights, which protect citizens from unreasonable searches and seizures. Specifically, the Fourth Amendment ensures that a person's right to security in their persons and property are protected against arbitrary intrusions by law enforcement. The unwarranted use of a taser in this scenario, where there is no evident threat that would justify such a level of force, could also be construed as police brutality and excessive use of force. Under both Tennessee law and federal standards, particularly the guidelines set forth by court decisions interpreting the Fourth Amendment, law enforcement officers are required to use only the amount of force that is reasonably necessary in a situation based on the threat perceived. In this case, Officer Driscoll's actions seem disproportionate to the threat level, raising serious concerns about the appropriateness of his response. That's not lawful. Get out! Get on the ground! That's not lawful. Get on the ground and you can taste again. Okay, but I have my life. Get on the ground! That's not lawful. Get on the ground! That was not a lawful. Get job. on the ground! Please help. Get on the ground! Please help. Get on the ground! I'm on the ground, but that's not lawful, sir. I have my license on. Put your hands behind your back. Please stop. Help. Please. Please help me. Please help me, Lord. This is not right, sir. I had a right to ask for a supervisor because you... you... That's not right, sir. I have my license in my hand. Stand up. Please help. I can get up, sir. But you don't have to do all this. Why? Why did you have to do this? I just don't understand. I'm a real good person. I'm delivering a DoorDash that goes right there. That was unnecessary. You're right, it was necessary. No, it wasn't, sir. I told you to give me information. You refused to comply. I didn't refuse. Yes, I, you did. I, no, I asked a question. I am allowed to ask you. I need help. <laughs> good, thank you, sir. That wasn't right. That was not right, sir. I'm, I'm delivering a DoorDash. I'm good. I'm a good person. You can't pull me out of a traffic stop, sir. I never refused. That wasn't right. I have no radio signal. Let them know. Taser deployed and warning custody. At this stage of the encounter, Officer Driscoll removed Mr. Gordon from his vehicle and restrained him in handcuffs. Officer Driscoll is now awaiting the arrival of additional backup and his supervisors, who are expected to further evaluate the situation on site. This pause allows for supervisory review and ensures that all procedures being followed are up to standard. I'm not gonna sit here and argue with you. I, no I told you to give me your information. I you didn't want to comply. Question. Then I tell you get out of the car, to, I have and then you don't license. want to get out of the car. I have my license in my hand. They should be sending somebody. I asked, I asked for the supervisor, ma'am. And you you tased me because I asked for your Because you refused help. to comply, then we're resisting you were arrest. I asked for your information. You're you I'm not me arguing. Out the car. I asked for help. My information was in my hand. And you were refusing to give it. I did not refuse. Yes, I you did. I asked for your supervisor. I asked for your supervisor. Why am I not allowed to ask that? Because we're not doing that. When I give you a lawful order, you have to follow it. You have to uh, abide by my request. I didn't. Feel I do not have to abide by your request. It's a request. I don't feel comfortable. We're in the middle of stop, and I'm telling you, we're give me information. In the middle of the road. This is where you stopped. I could have kept going, but I don't know where to stop. I was so wrong, and you tased me. I've never got in trouble. I've never Thank you been, for stopping. I've never done nothing. 
<laughs> Thank you. That was so wrong, sir. I've never been tased, never been treated like this. I'm delivering a door dash and I was not speeding. You're fine, sir. I was wrong. Uh, I, he pulled me over for a traffic stop. I asked, could I see the the sprint speedometer? He, he said, no, I'm, I'm not allowed to let you into my car. I said, that's fine. I don't feel comfortable, man. I have a supervisor. He yanked me. He pulled my, first of all, he opened my door without my consent, pulled me out of my car, tased me while I'm in the car, and said I'm, I'm not abiding by his, his request. I have my license in my hand. I just asked for a supervisor, and he got upset. That's not, that wasn't right to be tased and treated like that. You didn't have to yank me, yank me on the ground or tell you. You didn't have to, to not follow me. orders. I didn't I resist. Not follow your orders. I asked to speak for a supervisor. Because while you I wanted to see the radar. Because I didn't feel comfortable. We stopped on the middle of the road and no, I didn't feel. Were well, you speeding? No, sir, I wasn't. That's why I told him. I, I don't believe I was speeding. Well, now you got bigger problems. And that's not a problem. That's, where, where is he tased? That was, I was uh, incorrectly. That's it was on that side. I told you. You tase me while I'm in my car for a traffic stop. You can't do that. You can't pull me out. It's not why you, you were You can't tased. treat me like that. I asked for your supervisor and you, you went crazy. Like, that wasn't fair to me. That wasn't fair to me at all. You, grab that you can't do that during a traffic stop. You can't do that during a traffic stop, sir. Sworn probe in the side. I don't see the other one. Are any of you all his supervisor? Yes, sir, we are. We'll talk to you here in just a minute. Let's get this thing cleared up. I got one thing to do. I don't know what else I'm going to see it. Oh, right here. <sighs> you never had to do a taste. I'm a good person. Supervisor for whatever circumstances the supervisor says I can understand. So what I was doing? So I saw him for 49.35. 
kept asking for his information. Well, I want to see your record. Well, we're not seeing that. If you want to do all that, you can go to court. I want to, I'm, no, you, you don't, you didn't stop him. Da, 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 da. And so I tell him to get out of the vehicle. No, I'm not, I'm not getting out of my car. Well, so, okay. Then he's like, I want to see your supervisor when I grab hold of him. And so I gave, gave him multiple times to get out of the car. Wouldn't do it. This is even after going hands on. Before I tased him, gave him multiple warnings. You're going to be tased, you're going to get out of the car. He still ain't got a car, so <clears throat> that's when I popped him. <clears throat> Mr. Gordon was initially charged with resisting arrest and obstructing justice. However, the Hamilton County District Attorney's Office subsequently reviewed the case and cleared Mr. Gordon of all charges, leading to their dismissal. The College Dale Police Department conducted an internal review of Officer Evan Driscoll's actions during the incident with Mr. Gordon on March 10th. The review concluded that Officer Driscoll had acted within the department's policies and standard law enforcement procedures. On October 3rd, 2022, Officers Roy Staker, Davis, and Simmons from the East Ridge Police Department were called to Park Ridge Hospital following an incident involving Mr. Jonathan Ellish. Earlier that day, Ellish had been transported to the hospital by ambulance after he reported experiencing shortness of breath and chest pain. Upon examination, he was found to be intoxicated and distressed, expressing suicidal thoughts, which led a doctor to recommend admission for further treatment. However, Ellish declined the medical advice and left the hospital premises on foot. Shortly afterward, he was encountered by the East Ridge Police Department officers on Spring Creek Road. The interactions between the officers and Mr. Ellish were recorded on their body cam footage. This young lady wants to talk to you, that's why. Okay. Hi. You, you have a pick line still in you. No, I don't. That's that's blood. I know. Because you ripped out, because you took the IV out. You have a okay. CON, you can't leave. Do you understand what a CON is? No. It's a certificate of need. It's a legal hold. You cannot leave the hospital. Upon encountering Mr. Ellish near the hospital, officers found him walking barefoot and disoriented. Officer Simmons incorrectly mentioned a certificate of need, CON, regarding Mr. Ellish, which seemed misplaced since law enforcement does not handle such matters as it is not in their jurisdiction. According to Tennessee Code 33-6-403, the law enforcement outlines specific criteria for the emergency detention and treatment of individuals with mental health issues. 1. The individual must be diagnosed with a mental illness or a serious emotional disturbance. 2. There must be a significant likelihood of serious harm due to the mental condition. 3. The individual requires care, training, or treatment for their mental condition. 4. No other less restrictive alternatives are suitable to meet the individual's needs. Only if all these conditions are met, a person may be lawfully detained by a medical facility for necessary treatment. This framework is intended to ensure that interventions are appropriate and that individuals receive the correct level of care without unnecessary involvement from law enforcement unless absolutely required for safety reasons. This incident does not seem to meet this requirement. Why? Because you have a CON that's been issued. What, what's that mean? It means you don't have the right to. Why? I, I'm, a, I'm a grown ass man. You are a grown ass right. man. You're right. But but they someone has taken that right away from you well, because why? we're not going to discuss why. It's not well, up yeah, to us. Yeah, yeah, there is a reason for discussion. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Because they have deemed it medically necessary that they can legally. Because hold you. I made one unnecessary statement. That's how it goes. Well, I'm going home. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Why are you doing this? Oh, Jim. Oh, Jim. Why are you doing this to me? 412. Look, you ain't got to get home, man. Hold on. Please don't hit me. Please don't. 412. You don't have to. 412, At this critical moment, Officer Roy Staker abruptly seized Mr. Ellish's arm and applied handcuffs without any prior warning. Compounding this, Officer Davis, also without warning, forcefully restrained Mr. Ellish with a bear hug and pushed him to the ground, which was littered with large, jagged rocks. During this aggressive maneuver, Officer Davis used his forearm to press Mr. Ellish's face against the rocks, causing severe injury to his nostril and face. This excessive use of force was directed at Mr. Ellish, who was simply a patient in need of medical attention, 
not a criminal suspect posing any immediate threat. The 14th Amendment ensures due process and equal protection under the law, which in this context prohibits the use of force that is grossly disproportionate to the need for action. The aggressive tactics used by the officers, especially without any provocation, could certainly be interpreted as a deprivation of Mr. Ellish's rights. This incident underscores the need for law enforcement to adhere strictly to protocols that respect individuals' constitutional rights and the necessity for appropriate, measured responses in law enforcement interactions. Okay, we got him. No, we don't. No, we don't. All right, taser, taser. You ready? I'm going to tase you if you don't put your hands behind your back. Do it now. Do it now. On the count of three. Put your hands behind your back. I'm trying to find my glasses. Your glasses are busted. Well, I, mean, damn I need a second pair of cuffs. Please. No, do this. There you go. Thank you. God. I can't. <laughs> you know, sir. I've got well, my arms. No, like he genuinely will not go. They, they, my arms. Oh, God, they won't reach back. They do now. The treatment of Mr. Ellish by the officers is deeply concerning, as Mr. Ellish pleads with the officers to handle him gently, expressing that the handcuffs are too tight and do not fit as they are being forced. Officer Roy Staker dismissively responds, they do now. This disregard for Mr. Ellish's discomfort and physical safety is troubling, especially as he is visibly in pain, bleeding, and his clothes are torn from the encounter. Meanwhile, Officer Simmons appears to find the situation amusing, laughing at the restricted movement of Mr. Ellish's arms due to his age. This behavior may contravene Tennessee's assault laws, which include causing bodily injury to another person. Tennessee Code Annotated Section 39-13-101 states, A person commits assault who, intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly causes bodily injury to another. Additionally, under Tennessee law, battery involves unlawful physical contact, Tennessee Code Annotated Section 39-13-102 states, A person commits aggravated assault who intentionally or knowingly commits an assault as defined in Section 39-13-101, and the assault results in serious bodily injury to another. The officer's actions, from forcibly tightening the handcuffs beyond a reasonable measure to causing physical harm and balking the elderly man's pain, could potentially fall under these definitions. Please. 53. Yeah, you're sorry. I guess you are. You damn right I am. Will you let will you let me up? Yep. Pull your knees up. Pull your knees up. Then we're gonna roll over to your luck. Oh damn! God that hurt. Why do you wanna be like that, man? I wouldn't. I wasn't trying to be no You were. Nope. Some gel. Well, can you ease up on the cuffs? No. Nope. No. Nope. Come on. Let you settle down for a minute. I'm, I'm good. We'll Mr. Ellish has repeatedly communicated to the officers that the handcuffs are too tight and causing him significant pain. Yet his requests for loosening them have been consistently denied. This refusal to alleviate his pain raises serious concerns about the violation of his Eighth Amendment rights which protects individuals from cruel and unusual punishment. This constitutional protection is crucial, especially once an individual is in custody, highlighting the responsibility of law enforcement to ensure humane treatment. The Eighth Amendment states, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. What? Because it's on you. <laughs> it's made with vodka. I had some of that earlier. I can tell. <laughs> I'm good, though. You're I'm not good. good. Please be good. No. No. We're, we're going to adjust them here in a minute. We're, we're going to see how long you can act like a gentleman, okay? Oh, I, I'm good. Trust me. Y'all slam my damn head because I'm good. Well, <laughs> I'm really I good. You weren't up until that point. Well, I wouldn't. I, I was being an ass. You don't it's all say. Right. 
Okay. You silly Come on, goose. Man. At the moment when Mr. Ellish attempted to apologize for his behavior, Officer Simmons responded by dismissively calling him a silly goose. This term, while seemingly mild, is used in a context that is unprofessional and belittling, particularly from a law enforcement officer to a detainee. Such language is not only inappropriate, but also undermines the gravity of the situation and the dignity of the individual involved, reflecting poorly on the officer's professionalism. They're going to adjust him in a minute. Just chill out. He's got to get some gloves on my friend. He's got blood all over him. Really? Yep. Yeah. Because you fell on the ground. I didn't fall. Who me to the ground? Well, we threw you on the ground, but you still got blood on you. Well, Your fault, my fault, nobody's fault. You still got blood all over you. Well, we're all cool. Good. I'm cool. Good. Good. Please ease up on me. No. Nope. We, we got to adjust him here. Hey, why were you giving the hospital staff a hard time? Ah, damn I wanted me. to go home. Well, you're not going home now. What? Why, why, why couldn't you go home now? Was he, uh... Why? I, did, I missed it. Because they have a sign. legal reason to keep you there. What? I, nobody told me what the reason was. You told me what the reason was, what? so it's clear you know. What? You said because you made one unnecessary comment. I did. I made an unnecessary Say comment. I, I, I said I might want to hurt myself. Well, and can't I say that. Well, I mean... Please ease up on these cuz. Uh, you ready? Yeah. Stand up. Okay, here we go. Yeah. All right. All right, come on over here. Come over to my car. I will. I, my, my foot. Your foot what? My, my, you got two of them. Use the other one. It was. All right. Okay. Oh. Please. You got a 425 at the clearing? Please use that 425. I don't, he's got a CON. I don't think. Oh, come on, man. I can. He's, that's what he's adjusting him right now, bud. Oh, okay, thank you. I, I'm just trying do to... Do you have my other stuff? I do. That's why I was coming okay. over here. Originally. You're fine. All right, thank you. Oh. Mm -hmm. I got my ass whipped. By a girl? I know. That's embarrassing. It should be. Oh, God. The lack of professionalism continued when Mr. Ellish stated, I got my ass whooped to which Officer Roystaker replied dismissively, by a girl. This comment is not only inappropriate, but also sexist, reflecting poorly on the officer's sensitivity and professionalism. Such remarks are derogatory and undermine the seriousness of the interaction, further diminishing the respect due to Mr. Ellish. Oh, please, please. There you go. Oh, God, it hurts. Well, that's as, that's as good as it gets. I don't have gloves on. What? What? Turn his wrist please, please, inwards. Please there you oh. go. Better? Yeah. All right. All right. You might want to try the other one. Yeah. See if you can listen that sound. Man, I'll take no. it. No, it's, it's good. He's off, I'll sit. No. And I'll be happy. No. So. No. Ain't gonna happen? No. Will you wipe my nose? No. Why? Because I'm not your mother. Okay. Can I wipe it? No. Wow. This party with we're, we're, we're right here. We'll, we'll take care of you at the hospital. May I turn around? Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to do anything to get my ass with you. Well, you did. She, she's she's tough. Bad, hell yeah. You were a badass lady. She is. Come on over here and sit in my car. I'll drive. Okay. Come on over here. You want me to drive? No, I'll drive. Oh, okay. Come on over here. Come over here. I'll drive. Right. Nope, I'll drive. <laughs> Come on. Hey, I got a, uh, I got some stuff in my pocket. Well, come on over here and sit down in my car and we'll worry about when we get to the, to the well, ER. Screwdriver. Get in the car. Well, come on, man. Get in the car. I'm going to. I'm trying. I don't know where to sit. On the seat. That's where I usually sit. Why are you giving me such a hard time? Because you're giving him a hard time. I'm sit not. down. I just, I didn't know, I didn't know where it was. Well, if you weren't so inebriated, you'd be able you're, to see a little bit better. You're probably right. I know. It's I feeding. Okay, we're good? Man, you pulled that taser out. I was like, I don't want to get tased. I was not going to tase you. <laughs> you want to just meet over here? Yeah. Officer Roystaker returned Mr. Ellish to Park Ridge Hospital, 
though no criminal charges were filed against him. In the incident report, Officer Roy Staker noted that Mr. Ellish was unusually bloody, which was later explained by ER staff as a result of him being on strong blood thinner. Subsequently, Mr. Ellish filed a lawsuit against the city and the three involved officers. The lawsuit alleges multiple violations, including unreasonable seizure by excessive force, failure to protect and render aid, conspiracy to violate civil rights, assault, battery, conversion, and civil conspiracy. Mr. Ellish's lawsuit is seeking $500,000 in punitive damages and requests that the case be decided by a jury. Highlighting the severity of the claims and the impact of the incident on his life, be sure to check out our previous video where we cover another outrageous police encounter.